Swanley School, East London. 90% Bangladeshi. Pupils in Year 7 are going to be devising, performing and critically reviewing their own missing scenes from a play, The Demon Headmaster. You must go to the head. Speaking and listening skills are integral to learning, in the English classroom and beyond. Drama work offers obvious opportunities, but collaboration and reflection can be even more important than performance itself. Start talking about your role play. Just wait for the others. John Yandel, PGCE tutor at the Institute of Education, has come in to observe his former student, Singita Sharma. OK, don't worry, I'm going to give you... This is her first full post, but the issue she's dealing with will be familiar to most teachers. I selected different points in the play that we had read, thought, OK, maybe there's a space here where there could be a missing scene. And it has to be based on what's just happened in that previous scene. Um, but they really had to use their imagination. And then once they got into that, they really started to enjoy it. What are some of the things that you need to be thinking about? The class will be your audience. What will you need to think about while you're doing The lesson has at its heart a series of set-piece performances. What transforms those improvisations into something more significant in terms of the development of students' competence as speakers and listeners is the way that Sangeeta gets the students to be explicit about the criteria that are central to their performances and the criteria by which they will be judged. And so there is a kind of self-consciousness about the improvisations. Like if you're a robot, you have to make it think that they think that you're like a robot in the stuff. OK, how can we summarise what Shibli just said there, Nahid? If you're a strict person, you have to act strict. If you're a funny person, you have to like, tell jokes and stuff and make people laugh. OK, so think about the character you're playing and think about the actions that go with that character. It is kind of an awful habit that you could get into as a teacher where somebody says something and you kind of do that, yeah, and then you kind of rephrase Fill what they've the said, yeah, um, which is a horrible thing to do. What you did was not to short-circuit the move from that particular sense of this is my role, this is what I've got to do, to a general point about staying in role. You let that come out of the class. And what I think is that when you're acting, I think you should not like try your best not to like laugh and stuff and giggle about. So obviously you're doing this with your friends and you don't want to get distracted by each other. Yeah. So stay in role, don't lose uh, concentration. Once you're reading, you have to make expressions, um, like move your hand and stuff. If you just like stand there, they're just gonna be bored. It's like, they're gonna say to yourself, why did I come here? Just like, they're gonna say, I just wasted my money. Okay, good. Movement, yeah. Building on this point, what else do you think, you need to think about there? The way you're intervening in that is to orchestrate their contributions mm. so that each contribution comes from a listener, not just a speaker. So yeah. they're, they're forced to, to listen to each other and to elaborate on those points instead of just saying what they'd, they'd pre-planned, yeah. if you like. And it, yeah, it works effectively. If you're just acting funny, then the audience can laugh, but not just laugh so you can laugh. OK, so if the people who are doing the role play are going for humour, what they need to make sure that they laugh then? Is that what you're saying? No, if they want to laugh, then they can laugh. But if, they, if they're laughing, like, just laughing for 10 minutes or that, they can't. So is he giving everybody a warning that you must laugh when it's required? I, it was quite difficult for me at, the, at yes. the time to figure out exactly what he was trying to say. And I probably, I might, did I simplify what he was saying? He's not accepting any simplified version of his thought that you offer yeah. him and he's struggling to articulate that much more complicated rule for audience behaviour. The focus of the lesson is not just for us to sit there, watch one role play and then we watch another one and then that's it. So I'll be asking you, what did you think of that? What was good about that? And you can use some of these ideas to be able to say, OK, I think Mukith was really good because he did this, this and this. Work out your role plays, make sure you're prepared, and I'll give you a three minute warning, okay? Get into your groups now. Imagine if the scene didn't end there. What do you think? If they stayed in the playground, what do you think could happen next? Right at first, we'll come and one of us will say that it was all because of you in trouble. You are feeling tired and you hypnotize me. You can go have lunch. You're right, Imanol. You need to encourage him. If you think that he needs to work on his tone of voice, then you need to help him out, okay? 
Where is this missing scene taking place? Upstairs. In Dina's bedroom? Okay. So what, are Harvey and Lloyd um, sharing a room because she's arrived? Okay, that's a brilliant idea. Okay. They were teasing Imanol that he had a flat tone of voice. And poor Imanol, he kind of really wanted to take part in this. And his confidence had been knocked by somebody in there. So they thought it was hindering their, um, their performance. So you're being very kind of brusque and straightforward about the fact that they've got to get on and make the best of it and collaborate in the performance. But you're also giving them credit for the good ideas they've got. So you've made the kind of bitter pill of, of getting on and coping mm. with them and all easier for them to swallow by, by saying, yeah, that's a really good idea. So I said to Fazlain Bilal, well, what if the scene didn't end there? So they've written here, Dina is unpacking. So you're saying they're going to have an argument. Start working out that dialogue, all right? Well, Dina is tied in the room and Lord comes and says, what are you doing? Just give her time. Give her give a chance. chance. I like it the way it is. Just a wonderful example of a collaboration amongst three students that is involving speaking and listening and reading and writing all in one go and they're very, very serious about this complicated drafting process. I know who the friends are in this, character, uh, in this class so I put them in friendship groups. They're clearly a friendship group because they've known each other since they were about three. I need my friends or I like it where are we? I like it where the way I like it the what way do you is. think you're doing? I mean, comma. I like it the way it is. And they were very encouraging of each other as yeah. well. I think Jakir gave a little wink to somebody after they said, <laughs> Yeah, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> comma, everybody knew there had to be a comma there. <laughs> you are you're out the stage and us two are gonna make the other children line up and go to class. Then you end the list of the list of line up in alphabetical order. Who are you? We, we are, are the, the prefect, the voice of the headmaster. Answer the question. The head is, is a the marvelous man. He is not a monster from a horror movie. Dima, as she says, oh, oh, to herself. Yeah. Oh, she's she's going to say that to herself. We're going to let like, freeze. Then, when after she's finished, we're going to go back home. That's going to be much more like Okay, good. That's good about the freeze because that's how they end a scene, isn't it? When they freeze and then they go to the next scene. Yeah, okay, good. Well done. All right, get comfortable with your lines, all right? You've got about 30 seconds. We talk a lot in teaching about the importance of self-assessment and peer assessment. What we get in Sangeeta's lesson is those kinds of assessment played out in practice and we can see in her lesson just why they can be such powerful tools in developing students as language users. Baboob, Shiblu and Nahid are going first. Okay, the rest of you, you need to listen, you need to be looking out for what this group is doing well. She's encouraging all students to perform, if you like, a double role, to be performers but also to stand back from the performance and to judge the performance according to their own criteria, which she has already sifted through. Two, one. Line up in alphabetical order. Go to your classrooms. Hold. You broke one of the kind of basic rules of classroom management in that you had your back to some of the students. I think you did that, whether you absolutely were conscious of it, Nevertheless, I think you did it deliberately. I'm guessing that if I had sat myself somewhere else, they'd probably turn to me automatically and wait for my kind of analysis of it. And, um, whereas I guess you know, placing myself as an audience member took the focus off me saying, OK, this is good yeah. because... Um, and just you know, sat, sitting there and throwing it back to them, the audience, all the time. Yeah. And close your eyes. Think. Think of the headmaster. How, how easy. I don't know. Okay, you, you must come in now. So at the end. Okay, brilliant. Well done. Okay, if you can just stay there for a moment. Okay, hands up. What was good about that, uh, Nazmo? They were laughing. They were just concentrating on their role. They're concentrating on their role. Okay, good. So then they didn't get distracted by each other or anyone in the audience. They stayed in role. They were concentrating. So that means they didn't laugh or anything. They always stayed in the role. Okay, that's why it went smoothly. Uh, Makith. They were facing 
at the front, at the audience. So they were aware of the audience, that they were being watched, that they were performing this for the rest of us. OK, yes. good one. We didn't even put that on the board. Jeff, Rose, why do you speak at the same time? The headmaster said to us that we appreciate what he does to us. And you shifted into questioning them in role and they respond. Mm. They're able to stay in role even at that stage, even when the improvisation is finished, mm. to improvise in, in response to your questions. We only did it with that group in the end. But I wish I had done it with the other groups if we had more time. OK, second group. You're lucky, man. Yeah, because even though I started it. Yeah, because maybe he knows you, maybe he's your great, great ancestor or something. Maybe so. Oh, I think the headmaster's coming now. Oh. I'm in trouble, man. I called my parents actually at the night. At night. Now who's laughing now? Yeah. <laughs> who's laughing? Yeah. Me. Which are you? you yeah, yeah, I can't see no laugh. I'm grounded. All right, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Okay, good. Well done. <laughs> All right. What was good about that, and why? Should be more hands up than that. You ask for comments and say there should be more hands up than that. Yeah. And again, you're giving that little bit of pause time to pull more students into activity yeah. rather than just taking whoever sticks their hand up first. Yeah. Sofian? Um, in, the, in the beginning, um, it's like the way they started it off, it was okay, um, like quite good because we knew straight away who might be who. They um, made it clear which yeah. characters they were playing. Yeah. How, could you, how could you tell that though? What did they do to make it obvious to you? The way Rashid was And what you're very good at doing is asking the supplementary question, is pushing Sufyan or anyone else just that bit further. And it's making Sufyan do more work in that role as critical audience. I guess it's an example of getting them out of that habit of, I know what I want to say, I'll put my hand up, and then that will be the end of it. And maybe, maybe making them think a little bit longer by pushing them on the spot. Very quickly, with the person next to you, I want you to vote, or in your group, vote for the one that you thought was the best one, very quickly, and think of one reason. Can you choose it for yourself? No, you can't choose yourself. I vote for Nahi, because he was doing it really nicely. Have you thought of yours? Quiet, Mukith, Scroop, who did you vote for? For them, Fazle, Jackie and Bella. Why? One reason. Because um, the way like, they were talking... All right, brilliant. Uh, Jahinge. She blew on them. Second place, I'll put Jackie. And third place, I'll put Rashidu on them. <laughs> OK, first place, why? They were just perfect. They've done it. They've got the criteria the on the board. What did they you do? You want really more well? out of them. You want them to say why. Even at this stage, when it's lunchtime, you're pushing Jahangir to come up with a good reason, to tie it back to the criteria that you started off yeah. getting them to think okay, of. Okay, good. Enthusiasm and good expression, so well done. All right, well done to everybody today. Um, help me sort out this room and then you can all go, except for... I saw that class at their best in that boss. lesson. Now, I'm not just talking about behaviour. It is kind of an issue with this class, their ability to kind of listen to each other and to respond to what each other are saying. Um, and I think they were doing that really well in that lesson. I think I've really got to see their imaginations at work for the first time. One can become preoccupied with full-blown drama. And I think that the most interesting and most productive speaking and listening activities within the English classroom are often not like that at all. They're very much using language as part of the process of coming to grips with complicated texts. And if that works for the demon headmaster, mm. it goes on working for Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, whatever they read, yeah. till they leave Swanley and even beyond that.